Hey everyone, Back Photography here, back with another video. Thank you again for joining me. Today, I'm gonna to be looking at a portrait session I did in natural light with the Sigma 85mm f1.4 lens. But before we get into the video, make sure to check out my new e-guide on how you can take portraits in low light and at nighttime. And there's gonna be a link in the description and I spent a lot of time trying to make it really useful and informative for you. So please check that out if you're interested in shooting in low light conditions and at nighttime, um, particularly with portraiture. So now let's get into the video and have a look at this natural light photo shoot I did with Riley here. So for this photo shoot I used the Sigma 85mm f1.4 art lens as well as a Sony a7R2 camera body with the MC11 adapter so that I could use my Canon Sigma lens on my Sony body. And there's going to be a link in the description to all of the equipment I used on this photo shoot as well as some raw files from this photo shoot as well if you would like to have a edit of some of these. Um, and at the end of the video as well I'm going to do an edit on one of these videos um, so follow along with me if you would like the raw files will be in the description. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the location and also the lighting. Essentially what we're doing here is shooting about an hour before sunset. And the reason for that is so that we get some really nice golden light so that we can shoot backlit portraits and get a really nice warm feel in these images. We're also shooting in an urban setting. We're shooting in the center of a city. We found a nice little patch of grass, which is nice and open so that we can get some really blurry backgrounds and get uh, the background really far away from our subject. But also we're not gonna have too much uh, in the background that is going to be cluttering up the image and making it distracting. And also it means that we can get some contrast between the urban look of the surroundings and also some greenery in the background as well. So here you can see me positioning Riley in the shoot and I'm trying to get her to be in front of all of that beautiful golden light that you can see poking out in between the buildings just in the background there. So basically what I'm trying to do is trying to get the sun in the background here so that we get that beautiful golden light in the background of this image. So not only is it important to position Riley in the right position, it's also important to position myself in the right position so that I get that beautiful backlit light slightly to an angle to the side of Riley, but also making sure that I don't have anything too distracting in the background. So now let's have a look at a few of the photos that we took in this location and then break one of the photos down and talk a little bit more about it in detail. So here's one of my favorite photos from this location. I really like the pose in this image and I also think that because we're shooting quite close in and we're shooting at a aperture of f1.4, um, because the focal point is quite close to the camera lens, we're getting a really, really blurred uh, background. And basically how that works is the closer you are to your subject when you're focusing, the more blurry your background is gonna be. And because we're shooting on a lens that goes all the way down to f1.4, shooting at f1.4 is gonna make really, really blurred backgrounds compared to the focus of your subject, especially since that this is a telephoto 85mm lens. So that's why the 85mm has always been one of the go-to portrait lenses for portrait photographers because it is so good at blurring out the background and making beautiful bokeh, but also the compression of the lens gives really aesthetically pleasing features to your model. A couple other things I like about this photo is that we have the leading lines of the ledge that Riley is sat on, so that's a really nice feature for this photo. We can also see some nice golden light reflecting from the uh, right side of her hair as well, so that just adds a little bit more color depth and light depth to this image too. And also, we get a little bit of green to one side and then the gray color to the other side, and that kind of adds a little bit of separation between the left side of this photo and the right side of this photo. We also have nice sharp eyes in this photo, which is really important for a portrait. And we're also getting really great eye contact from Riley to the camera, which really adds a nice uh, connection between you as a viewer uh, to her in the photo. So let me know what you thought about that photo in the comments and what you would do to maybe improve it or change it. And now let's talk a little bit about the outfit that we chose for this photo shoot. We wanted something to be uh, nice and floral because we were going for a nice warm summery uh, photo. So we got a nice uh, colorful dress here and red always really complements green and makes your model stand out uh, from the photo. So red and a uh, red dress is always a really good choice for a female model. So now let's jump into Photoshop and have a look at what I did for that image. If you'd like to follow along, just go into the description and there will be a link to all the raw files from this photo shoot and you can edit that along with me right now. And also thank you for everyone who's been going to Instagram and sending me your edited photos uh, from these photo shoots. I really do enjoy having a look at them. So thank you once again for that. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and the first thing we're gonna do is just add some clarity to the entire image just to get some more mid-tone contrast in the highlights and shadows. 
Then we're going to increase the entire contrast of the image and just change the color balance of the photo to be a little bit more yellow because when you're shooting um, directly into the sun or close to directly into the sun, you are going to get a more blue color balance as your camera tries to correct for the sunlight. After that, we reduced the highlights and increased the shadows a little bit and just played around with the uh, whites and blacks until we got a nice contrast and a nice amount of highlights and shadows in the photo. The next thing I like to do is work a little bit on the eyes. So here we are just uh, getting rid of any of the changes to our brush tool and then adding some sharpness so that we can make the eyelashes a little bit more sharp and also make the pupils of the eye and the iris a little bit more sharp as well. So make sure you just take your time with this. Um, you've got all the time in the world, just make sure not to make too many crazy changes. These are all gonna be very subtle changes um, that will add up towards the end of the photo to make a really nice result. So we're also gonna add a little bit of saturation into the eyes as well, just to make them pop a little bit more from the image. Because the eyes are the first place that you're gonna be drawn um, as a viewer of any portrait. Okay, so just resetting my brush tool here. So the next thing we're going to do here is just add a little bit of sharpness to the eyebrows just to draw focus more to uh, Riley's face here and to her eyes as well. Make sure you brush um, with the sharpness tool in the direction of the eyebrows just so it looks more natural in the final product. Okay, so just resetting my brush tool here and then adding some clarity and reducing the blacks and the exposure as well so I can use this brush as a masking tool. And I'm just gonna use uh, this masking tool to cover all of Riley's hair here, just so I can see where exactly I'm making the changes. After we've made the selection, we're just gonna remove the blacks and the exposure changes um, and then we can know exactly where we've selected and we can make some changes to the hair. So we're gonna add a little bit of clarity to the hair and then also just change the color balance slightly to be a little bit more yellow, uh, just so we can accentuate the uh, light hitting her hair on the right side of her head. And one more thing we'll do just to make her pop even more from the scene is add a little bit of clarity to her dress as well. So one final thing we're gonna do here is just uh, boost up the whites a little bit and just add some highlights uh, to her face where there are natural highlights already on her face. So just on her forehead there, on her cheek, and that little highlight there on her nose as well. Make sure when you're doing these changes to make them quite subtle, otherwise they will look a bit strange in the photo. So now I'm just gonna make her legs a little bit brighter because they were hidden uh, by her body from the sun. They were a little bit darker in the image, so just brightening those back up uh, makes the entire image look more well balanced with the light. Okay, so that's everything for Camera Raw. Now let's jump into Native Photoshop and make a few more changes. Now I'm just going to do any uh, correction to the skin, just removing any blemishes or imperfections from the skin. I'm gonna fast forward this section here just because you've probably seen it all before and this will take about 10 minutes. So I'll just fast forward this now and then I'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for skin retouching. The next thing we're gonna do right now is just go back into Camera Raw because I've just noticed that some parts of Riley's skin are a little bit more purple than the rest, like her hands and some of her legs as well. So we're just gonna get a brush tool and then add in a little bit more yellow color to those areas just so it all looks even and all the same color. So you can see that just adding a little bit of color really evens out her skin tone. Now we're gonna use the liquify tool and basically just make her hair a little bit more full and thick. This is something that I like to do to pretty much every single portrait that I do. But before we do that, let's just add a little bit more light to the corner of the photo. Just add a little bit more depth to the image with a light side of her face and then a dark side of her face as well. So with the liquify tool, just make sure you don't make any really big changes. Just make lots of little small changes just so the image doesn't look warped and um, it just looks um, better without actually distracting from the image. 
So you can see here I'm just making really small changes and then they'll all add up when you see the final result. So that's before and after. You can see that just changing the hair a little bit really does make a huge difference to the final product. So finally, I'm just going to remove this little uh, blob on the uh, ledge that Riley was sitting on, just because I think it was a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to use the patch tool here and sort of drag out that little part of the image that I didn't want to be in there. So you can use the patch tool just to circle any area that you don't like, and then you can drag it into another part of the scene of the pattern that you'd like, or you can use the content aware deletion technique, which is essentially where you uh, just circle an area and then click the delete button, and you can use a content aware deletion. So that is everything for this photo. I really hope that you like it. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you got this far into the video and hit that bell as well if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. Looking forward to your edits on this photo as well. And I will see you in the next one.